let us see what she's like through the twisties. Yeah, perfectly poised, but nice and balanced. Hi guys, welcome to DMT Dazmatron Motorcycle Trips and welcome to this edition of the Z650 RS Kawasaki a Retro bike that's been brought back into existence. Uh, this is the 2022 model um, which my good friend has lent me to do a bit of a test ride in it for a couple of days and, and the heavens have opened. It was supposed to be cloudy but it's a beautiful sunny day, how's that for a change? Um, but what I would say is if you're looking for a, a retro middleweight competitively priced motorbike with some beautiful styling such as this emerald green uh, edition they look no further than this bike the Kawasaki Z650 RS so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into some of the stats of the bike tell you some of the um, dimensions of the bike then we'll take it for a bit of a spin today yeah so we'll see what the bike's all about So the original Quack Z650 was known in North America as the KZ650. It was produced between 1976 and 1983. It was designed as a middleweight version of its biggest sibling, the Z900. Back then, the Z650 tended to compete in the market against Honda's CB650 middleweight. So I'd say hats off to Kawasaki for bringing back this stylish looking retro with its classic round LED headlight, its needle instrumentation, and it's 70s influenced bodywork. For £85 extra you can even get some retro tank decals. So the colours for the 2022 model come in a candy emerald at a cost of £8,099. Also comes in a metallic moon dust grey and ebony at £8,099 or metallic spark black in £7,949. New for 2024 is a candy medium red starting from £7,839 and the 2024 model also has added riding mode which maximises forward acceleration. Right, let's see what the uh, acceleration is like. Yeah, I mean, you don't need anything more than that really, do you? As I say, for a road legal bike, anything in excess of the sort of the speed limits, you know, for this type of bike, a retro 650, it's got plenty ample uh, speed and acceleration to be able to get out of trouble or get somewhere quick if we needed to. It's uh, a lot of fun, definitely. Now what I would say is this bike's not got loads of power but it's got more than enough power just to match a road legal riding performance. It's got a liquid cooled four stroke parallel twin packing in 68 PS at 8000 revs per minute and a maximum torque of 64 newton meters at 6700 revs per minute. The engine design can be tracked back to its roots of the 2005 ER6 which had a wide band of power and a responsive throttle right up to and over a tonne. So the bike has six speed and it's chain driven. That manageable weight I mentioned comes in at 187 kilograms or 412 pounds. A 13.5 kilogram lightweight trellis frame with a 41 millimeter telescopic fork at the front and a horizontal back link with preload adjustment at the rear. Front wheel travel, we have 125 millimeters and 130 millimeters at the rear. All right, let's have a look at these uh, nipping brakes, see what they're like. Yes, very good actually. Now I know of Brembo brakes, obviously the industry standard, but they're for high performance sports bikes, uh, for bringing sports bikes to a halt, but these nipping brakes, quite good. You can see there it came to a a sudden halt, I was going about 40, 45 and that came to a stop quite uh, briskly uh, and I'd 
say I'd have a lot of confidence in these uh, twin disc and single disc sniffing brakes. Uh, very good, yeah, and you like that. We have two 300mm discs and dual piston Nissan caliper front brakes and one 220 rear disc with a single piston Nissan caliper. The wheels are 17 inch and they are cast spoke wheels, a lovely gold colour which I do really like. The front is a 120 70 and the rear is a 160 60 tyre. So just to show you the seat height guys, I'm 5 foot 9 with a 29 inch inside seam. This has got the lower seat option at 800 millimetres. The standard seat is 820, so I'm 20 millimetres lower than the standard model. Clearly flat footing on both sides. Not a problem at all, what, 20 millimetres about this much? Maybe a bit less than that, so my legs are bent. You can see it's still quite bent and flat footing, so it's not a problem at all in terms of uh, confidence in getting your feet on the ground there. Let's see what she sounds like get round to the exhaust side okay let's fire her up so in terms of sound it's not a very desirable exhilarating powerful sound on this engine but give it a couple of revs <laughs> Through the gear changes and when you're going through the high revs it just sounds a bit more throaty when you're sort of giving it some beans down the road. The dash cluster is with two analogue style speedo and tachometer dials along with an LCD screen displaying trichometers. Pretty basic, uh, sort of, so that's what you want, it's a retro bike isn't it? It's with a nice two dials there, really really nice in terms of simplicity. And what I thought I'd do guys, I'd show you the instrumentation panel, it's really well lit up, you can see it's back lit up, it's just got a bulb in there that lights up other dials fantastically well there. Uh, so I thought I'd just take it for a little spin in the evening just to show you how good the lightage is. Now, I can't see the moon, I don't know how the GoPro works in the evening, but uh, I think I'll put the settings on uh, to try and show you the lightage. So, I've got no street lighting now, so I'm going to put the high beam on. There you go, you can see it projects really well f far ahead to uh, give me an indication as to what uh, what's going on ahead of me. Take it off and on again. And you can see the uh, gear select indicator and obviously the, the fuel and the revs and mileage etc. So it's uh, the lighting's really good on this uh, on this bike. So I've just stopped to put the indicators on, you can see how bright that light is. It's really well lit. These are called the Mickey Mouse mirrors for obvious reasons and they are quite rigid and, and uh, clear, no vibration at all and you can see behind you perfectly. Now as regards the fuel, Kawasaki state the 12 litre tank uses 4.3 litres per 100 kilometres so that's 65 miles per gallon. Now I checked on mcn.com they stated this, this fuel figure was gained from the 35 kilowatt restricted version. On Fuely.com, which is a website that I use to track fuel consumption data, two owners of this bike provided 6,000 miles of real-world fuel economy data, which after 6,462 miles tracked, uh, they did 61 fuel ups, and it averaged out as 62 miles per gallon, or 4.56 US litres per 100 kilometres. Now I'd suspect from those figures on Fuely.com, which are similar to those stated by Motorcycle News, those two motorcycle owners could also have been riding the 35 kilowatt restricted version. The full powered Z650 therefore may be in the region of 55 miles per gallon, which is still a good fuel consumption. The 2022 bike does come with standard ABS for safer braking, but no other rider assist. It does have an assist and slipper clutch providing a lighter clutch pull, and I would say that clutch is a really light engaging clutch, hardly any resistance there at all. There's also dual throttle valves for increased power. Now my buddy has added some of the following extras uh, to this uh, Z650 RS. So the tank emblems, as I've already mentioned. He's also added the chrome rear grab bar. Now he says he doesn't really take a pillion on it, but it's really useful for manoeuvring the bike around, around the garage and uh, just from A to B when you're getting off the bike and having to push it around. He's also added the radiator grill. 
and that low seat option which I've mentioned. Uh, so with any bike, always like to sort of do some manoeuvrability uh, at short distance just to see how nimble or manageable the bike is at a sort of slow speed. It's really very, very manoeuvrable at slow speeds. I'm not even having to turn the throttle or slip the clutch now. That's, uh, that's quite good, isn't it? Gives you confidence that you're potentially not going to stall the bike. Nice little bend here. She handles beautifully around the bends. And you can hear that throaty and bellowing sound as you open up the throttle. This is quite a nice bassy sound actually. And I would say in the higher revs you do get a little bit of, uh, only a slight little bit of vibration on the seat. Not too much. And this clutch on this uh, 650 is phenomenal in terms of there's just no resistance there at all. It's just almost like just going like that with your fingers. There's no resistance in it at all. All the switch gear is pretty straightforward. It's quite basic and simple and easily accessible. Your low and high beam indicator switch here. Your horn. Sounds like a scooter horn, doesn't it? Like most bikes. My pet hate with most horns on motorbikes. And also comment on the suspension on this bike, it's really good as well. I went over some speed bumps uh, in the village back there and it just seemed to absorb the, the speed bumps quite easily. Very good. Getting around these bends quite easily. Very nice. As I slip nicely through those bends there, ironically this road leads to a racetrack called Mallory Circuit. In fact, let's have a little ride up and see what's happening at Mallory. It's the main entrance to Mallory. Team Lotus, Formula One. And there's the Ferrari. Prancing horse. Ooh, look at that. Suzuki GSX-R600. It's not raining, what's going on? <laughs> Very nice. Uh, we just How are you? Really loud, I was waiting for you to start it, see what the pipes sound like. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I'll have a nice time anyway. <laughs> see ya. So the pros and cons with the 650 guys, I've spoken to the owner of the bike, he's had it for two years, uh, this bike. Uh, as to his positives and negatives. So uh, we'll start with the negatives first. There's seven that I've listed that we've both agreed on. First one being the tank size is 12 litres. Maybe it could have been a 13 litre tank just to give it a little bit more range and make the tank a little bit chunkier. Uh, number two, there's a crunching first gear, which I'd agree with. There is a little bit of a jolt, uh, but all the other gears going up and down, perfectly smooth, no problem at all. Now, uh, he did say there's a bit of a throttle snatch I never really noticed it, but uh, he said there is a, uh, a mapping upgrade which can rectify that uh, for the throttle snatch. Number four, he says it just struggled a bit over 70. Uh, I never really took it over 70, so I didn't really notice that. Uh, number five, he says the second service was expensive. It was £350 plus. Uh, number six, the stubby exhaust. It is a really ugly, ugly exhaust. Um, not very attractive at all. Lastly, number seven, no centre stand. Uh, but you could argue the fact that the tank size and the centre stand add to the slim, slimness of the bike in the sense that it's quite slim and narrow uh, and they can get the bike quite low to the ground because of the, there's no centre stand. So there are all the negatives, let's move on to the positives. Just before we get on to the positives, I want to put a shout out to a chap called Sam Foster. He was the first person to buy me a coffee after two years of content creation. Buy Me A Coffee is a, a thing where you can help content creators uh, in supporting their channel. So if you look down in the description, you'll see the hyperlink there. Uh, anybody wants to buy me a coffee, then I really appreciate it. it helps uh, support the channel. So looking at the positives with the bike then. So we've got a good, flat, comfortable seat. The bike's low to the ground, 800 millimeters with the flat seat. It's light, so it's easy to maneuver. 
I found it dead easy to ride actually and the owner confirmed that as well. Uh, it's great on all different road types, so motorway, country roads, A roads, you name it, it's just dead easy to ride. It's got more than enough power to cope with all those different road types. It's uh, quite economical, so it's got a good fuel range, uh, that's quite good. It's got an easy clutch with that clutch assist. The gears are dead smooth, except for that first gear. They're all smooth going up and down the gears. It's got ABS as standard. There's no other tech on the bike other than that really, so um, that's probably one of the reasons why it's so competitively priced. And then last but not least, I think the main positive of this bike is, is its looks. It's a beautifully styled retro looking bike, isn't it, the 650? And I think Kawasaki have done a, a really good job. So if you're looking for a, a good middleweight bike that does everything well, with some retro styling, then look no further than the Z650 RS. It's got a good fuel economic-y. Economic-y. <laughs> Ah! Uh.